I'll admit I'm a little anxious because of I normally take a passage and just completely unpack or try to unpack one thing. And uh, for the next two weeks, we're going to talk about communication. And uh, today's part is about listening. And I'm going to refer to a lot of it from the aspect of how we communicate and relate in our marriages. Okay? But I will tell you that these skills and these techniques matter whether you're married or not. I ran across one of them this morning when somebody came to me and started something. And I broke every rule that I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. <laughs> and then I put my hand on that person's shoulder and I said, you're an example or we're experiencing why we struggle sometimes. How many of you are going to watch the Super Bowl today? Uh, okay. The, I will at least watch for a little while. Uh, if the advertisements are good, I'll watch longer. Okay. The, but one of the things that will happen, and this was one of the issues for the Patriots. By the way, if you're pulling for the Patriots, I'm sorry, I'm not. Uh, but early on in the season, they had all these new defensive backs. And they kept making mistakes. They kept finding themselves in the wrong position. And every, they even said, our communication is broken. One of the reasons they're in the Super Bowl is because they fixed their communication. Why is this so important to me? Uh, every time I do marital counseling, a lot of the issues I ever face as a husband, as a dad, as a pastor, all revolve around communication. But when I do pastoral counseling for couples, the first thing that I see over and over is that a couple's communication is broken. And I'm like, could we have worked on this on the front end, please, before we got here? And that's how we got to these two weeks. Is uh, We were doing a lot of it. Uh, I think at one point last year, I was talking to six different couples at one time. And in each of the, those things, there was issues on communication. And so we're going to talk about listening and what Scripture says. So I want to go ahead and tell you what I'm going to say the big idea is. Then I'm going to give you our Scripture. And then we're going to unpack some ways we can learn to listen. Okay? Listening is loving. Listening is loving. When you stop and listen to somebody, you have learned or you have loved them. You have cared for them. You have allowed them to be heard. Before I start with James and everything, just let me unpack a piece out of, and it's not in our context of Scripture, but in Genesis chapter 2, God tells us that man, and, that man would leave his father and his mother and they would become one. They would be bound together. In Ephesians, over and over, it, there's a piece in Corinthians, Ephesians, and Colossians about how our houses are to look as husband and wife. It tells us that we should love our wives, that our wives should love their husbands and care for them. There's a whole lot there, and I could do a whole series out of breaking out those passages. I know some of you are going, it says submit, John. I said, I know. But I promise you, if the man does his part where it says that he loves you as Christ loved the church, you won't have any problem. Because he gave everything he had, including his life, for the church. So that when we come to the end, we can be made pure and lifted up to him. And if we love that way, the rest of that is all good. Because we will understand we're loved. So, Scripture tells us how we should love each other over and over. And I say to you, that when you listen to your spouse, you have loved them. When you start listening to somebody else, 
you have loved them. In James, I got so many paper clips up in this Bible today, I will be flipping forever. I'm going to use James, 1 Peter, and a group of verses out of Proverbs. James chapter 1 says, My dear brothers and sisters, Oh, this is better. Take note of these, of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. We get angry when we don't hear. Then out of Proverbs. Eighteen, verse thirteen. To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. I have been married twenty eight years. Sometimes that seems like just a little while. There are others that time would tell Kay would tell you it seems like eternity. I would too. Most interesting thing is, I will tell you, Kay and I do not have a perfect marriage. Everything that I will tell you, she and I both know. But there are days, sometimes even weeks, when we snarl at each other. We are just, we can't find a way to talk and communicate. I am smart enough now, today, to understand in K's as well, to understand that all of a sudden we need to look at how we are talking to each other. And we back up and work on some of the things that I'm going to tell you today. Because listening is loving. And it is not perfect all the time. But when I understand that foundation for how I'm going to have a good relationship, I'm smart enough to be able to go back and go, yeah, i got to listen a little better today. Do you know when they, there was a survey done, um, Gary Chapman, who, and I'll show you two books that I love that talk about relationships or marital relationships. He had a survey done of divorced couples. They asked them why they got divorced. 85% of them said their communication was broken. Not that somebody was cheating or not that the finances broke us, but that they couldn't talk. Hmm. So, and that's another reason that we came to talk about this. Because I believe that Scripture says we ought to Look at it. So that part it says, to answer before listening, that is folly and shame. This is, happens the more we know each other, the faster this happens. How many of you, when you're talking to somebody you know, and they start something, and you start to either process your answer, or Interrupt them before they finish and answer. Anybody guilty? That's what I did in the hall this morning with somebody that here. It happens with Kay and I all the time. But you cannot hear what they're saying if you are trying to answer them already. Because when you're thinking about your answer, you stopped what? listening hmm listen to everything they have to say and I realize sometimes they have a whole lot more to say than I can handle or I might have a whole lot more to say than you can handle but one of the first things that you have to understand if you are going to love them and to listen is to pause and to let them speak. 
Man, that is hard some days. Because here's how it plays out for Kay and I. Kay's talking about something, and y'all know I have a thousand things on my mind going 90 miles a minute like somebody has turbocharged me and I am ready to go. And she has something she wants to tell me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, come on, cut to the point. That is literally the conversation at times. I have cut her off. I have devalued what she wanted to tell me. And I have not heard her. And I promise you that even as she cuts to the chase, and then I answer, I haven't done a good job of that. That's challenging because sometimes Kay has more words than I can handle because I got other stuff in my brain. But when I stop and do that, all of a sudden, she's been heard. One of the biggest things, especially from our relationship standpoint, is that our spouses want to be heard because they think when you stop and listen to them, by the way, this works for our boyfriends and girlfriends before we get there and we can practice this. It makes it easier on the backside. They have been heard. So oftentimes, we don't feel like we've been heard, do we? We want somebody to understand and to get that I'm frustrated. Or I'm scared. Or it was just a lousy day. And we have not heard them. And if we don't hear them, we can't ever respond right. I'm going to use a lot of K and I examples. Some of it will be right, and some of it will be stuff where you're like, how in the world are y'all still married? The other day that I got a thousand things on my mind, and Kay and I were down to one car. My truck was over at Big Mac Tires. I went to pick her up because I had the Toyota. It was a bad day for my wife at Springfield. All the Springfield folks said, Watch this, sorry. She just had a bad day. She'd had a bad day on Friday. This was Monday. It was bad. I picked her up and I could tell it was bad because I'm thinking, the new car, man, easy. I promise you, I was concerned about what was happening with the truck. And I started to tell her exactly what I told you. It's like, just cut to the chase. Now, I did not do a good job. A, fortunately, I did not say just cut to the chase. I will tell you, I wasn't wholly engaged in that conversation because I was thinking about the truck. But before I said anything, I let her finish. I let her say her piece. Now, I wanted to tell her she could go quit. But she carries insurance, she can't quit. Sometimes, even when we're going and we have other things on our mind, we have to stop and to hear them, to let them speak. Long before we answer. Because I will tell you, when you let them speak, your answers get better. Because you've heard the whole thing. Because do, do you make the best decisions on half the information or all of the information? When I make a business, I was taught to make a business decision. I do it with church. I want all the information I can so that I can make the best decision I can make. Now, sometimes you can overdo that aspect. But if I haven't heard my spouse out or somebody talking me to the end, I can't give the best answer. So the first step in listening is loving is to let them finish before you ever start processing your answer. That's okay. There'll be that pregnant pause, we call. It's until you get used to it, you'll be like, 
There's nobody talking. It'll be okay. You'll get there. So first step, listen before you answer. The second one, and this is one of the ones um, I had to learn. I have to practice. Um, and there's some real, you can actually go to classes on this style of listening, okay? But listen at Proverbs chapter 25, verse 12. It says, Like an errand of gold or an ornament of fine gold is the rebuke of a wise judge to a listening ear. The judge wants to give you clarity. He wants to give you something that you can understand. Part of my reading as I was getting ready for this, and I thought I had written it down, and I missed, I misplaced a quote I wrote down. It said, the best gift that you can give someone is listening to them. It will be better than the nicest car. It will be better than anything else you can give them. Because you have heard them. You have said they matter. In a world that clouds our minds and our time with so many things. Facebook, television, internet, on and on. For our teenagers, what is it when you have a streak? What Snapchat. You, the streaks is they keep, they've keep communicated through Snapchat once a day. Is that the way that goes? Yeah. I don't Snapchat. I don't. But seeking clarity in the communication. So here's the second part. You've heard them. You've heard them all the way out. Okay? And then I go up to Carolyn and she's told me something and I ask, so I heard you say, or here's what I'm hearing you say. Can I give an example that goes back to the other day, me being at school, and we were talking about, um, Karen was talking about how she's doing with, with Bruce in each day. And so if I come back and go, so what I hear you say is, it's hard right now, but you're going forward. You're trying to make positive steps. Which is what she, basically what she told me. Um, and all of a sudden, now, not only have I stopped and listened to you, I've come back, I've gained clarity. Because sometimes, and I, it's funny, um, I practice, or I communicate orally. It's what I do. And so... Sometimes what we think we say isn't always what you hear. Or sometimes what we hear isn't exactly what the person who's talking to us was trying to say. This past Thursday, last uh, Sunday sermon was evaluated by my classmates. I have not submitted myself to that type of evaluation in like six years. And it's funny, they ask, you know, I print big ideas. I print them in bulletins. It's what I want to communicate to you. But one of the group, they heard something different. I wrote it down. I'm like, okay, i got to go back and listen. Because what I say is not what always you hear. And so when you ask that type of question, then all of a sudden the barriers in your communication becomes clearer. That's hard sometimes. And it means that you have to engage a little deeper. This doesn't happen with how was your day, it was fine. These are those little deeper conversations. But, and we're going to talk about next week what communication can and should look like in our marriages. But when we do this, and we do this in any of our relationships, we'll get better at talking to people. And some of you are going, but... He or she doesn't talk. 
Maybe they've stopped talking because you stopped listening. Some people aren't like me. Some people don't have a lot of words. Okay, I get that and I understand that. But even the people who are quiet, especially with somebody they're close to, will talk more when they're being heard. And they'll tell you things that matter. Because I know some of you in this room that are quiet. But I also know that you can talk when, we, when it's right. And that's pretty consistent. Kevin McLaughlin, Julie's husband, he's quiet. He's an engineer. He, he processes. He's a lot in and not a whole lot out. Julie takes, and Julie's like me, she's chatty. Yes, she is. But when you get Kevin talking, it's a cool thing. So when you listen, you seek clarity. Even that silent stone will talk more. Because they know it's a safe place that they can talk. That was really big in our marriage relationships. Proverbs 1. Last piece. This was hard for me. Um, about where this one goes. Proverbs 1 verse 5. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. And let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. Let the discerning get guidance. And let me give you the first Peter piece. First Peter chapter three, verse seven. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Let me deal with a piece that's controversial there. You go, well, John, I'm not weaker. You're finer, ladies. How many of you got China at a marriage? We don't use it every day, do we? It's China. I don't, but Kate, my mom, my wife, they're not washing the China in the dishwasher. It's going to be hand washed. It's delicate. I don't like the, exactly the way that's translated. It's precious. So we need to understand that. The, uh, the class that I'm taking, CPE, one of the things they had to, they gave me, and I found out, found out I was, to say the least, limited. They gave out an emotional will. It was a page, and it's this circle, and it's got a big wide band on the outside, and then it's sliced up into these thin little pieces of pie all the way around. And it's emotions and feelings. I'm like, I got about five of these. There's like 45 or 50 different emotions on this circle. I'm like, I only understand four or five of these. Sometimes, guys, we, that's about all the emotion we got. But you have to understand the feelings and the emotions behind the words you hear. If you are going to understand and be able to give a wise response out of that proverb it says listen and add to your learning and let your discerning get guidance because unless you hear and understand the emotions and the feelings behind it you can't be discerning right now and it was funny, I see it all the time, and I was living it. When my grandmother died, there was, there's this tension. The matriarch is dead. And all of a sudden, there was two people that love each other are snarling at each other. And it wasn't because they were mad at each other. 
It's because they're hurting inside. And we have to understand how to respond in grace and understand what's happening around them. Sometimes when our children come to us or our spouses come to us and something, and they're, all of a sudden they're insecure. And we need to understand the insecurity so that we can respond, right? Hmm. None of you have ever communicated to your spouse, I love you! And there's nothing in your tone, in your face, that says, I love you. Right? Have I heard the words? Yeah. Kay and I do this all the time. Tone. I don't care what you said to me. There was something behind the tone. There was something behind the expression. And it happens to me all the time. I get, t- I get tense and my tongue becomes sharp. And it's not intentional. But it's there. Hmm. If we're going to listen, we have to understand the emotions and the feelings behind it. That's scary. But for those of us who are married, it's vital to your relationship. It's vital for Annette and Banner, Mama and Son. It's vital in that close working relationship and or my friends. But that means I have to stop and listen. Because when I listen, I am loving. When I hear you out before I answer, I am loving. When I seek to understand clarity in your feelings, I have loved you. God says we ought to live in relationships with people that are full of that. That we are showing love and grace. How are you doing with your listening? Take this. I, it's a neat piece on how to start listening. There is so much here to unpack. I could, I could talk and teach about it for a long time. And I tell you, I still mess it up. I still have to back up and go, I started to answer, and you're not done. Or I, even if I waited, I didn't get the clarity. And Kay looks at me and goes, that's not what I said. I'm sitting there, and at that moment, I'm rubbing my head, trying to rub the rest of those hairs off. And not at her, it's at my own self. Because I know. So what I want to do is just try to help you understand how to listen and love your spouse and are those other relationships you're in. Okay? Um, two books. Uh, I use this one. I buy this by, in boxes of ten. It's uh, Gary Chapman's Five Love Languages. It is great about how you communicate, and this will be vital for next week. The other piece, uh, Four Seasons of Marriage, talks about the spring and the winters and the falls and the summers that we happen because there are seasons in our marriages, um, and it does some communication pieces as well. They're not expensive. They're not hard, hard reads. I don't like hard reads. So you can actually gain something from them and use them. Um, and I'll talk about the five love languages next week and how that play that plays out for Kay and I again so uh, we'll talk about communication again next week one of the things that out of this is that when we are sharing this listening and loving peace if we get ready for communion we are sharing grace because when we hear somebody out we are extending them some grace we are extending them the love Jesus did it over and over. He wanted to love us enough that he might present the church and us to his heavenly Father with grace. 
I'm going to pray for you and then I'm going to invite you to his table today. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, um, today's a day where, Lord, I just feel like I'm teaching. But Lord, I think it's vital for us to help us in how we walk. And I thank you for giving us a burden and a willingness to teach this way today. Lord, um, as we go through this coming week, when we speak too fast, when we don't seek to hear completely, will you allow your spirit to remind us and poke us of how it means and looks for us to, to listen and to hear somebody and to love them fully. Father, I thank you for your word and your grace. Amen.